Hello, and welcome to part two of the Patient Experience Volunteer Program presentation. In part two, we will be covering what exactly is the Patient Experience Volunteer Program, what is the purpose of the program, what is your role and responsibilities as a volunteer, what your day will look like, and what tools are available to you to be successful in your role. So what is the Patient Experience Volunteer Program? At Vancouver Coastal Health, we are committed to hearing what matters to patients and their care partners and their experiences to make improvements. Patient Experience Volunteer Program supports the collection of real-time patient experience data across all VCH. This program will be rolled out in two phases. Phase one will involve asking only two overall experience questions at the main entrances and exit areas of acute hospitals and all care settings. Phase two involves expansion of those questions to include program and core patient experience questions for regional programs. So why is this important to um, VCH? One of our core values is exceptional care, which means delivering timely access to high quality uh, care in the best setting, whether that be uh, in hospital, home, or community. That also means strengthening the safety, quality, and experience experience of care. But how do we know we are strengthening the experience of care for our patients or clients? We need to hear from our patients and care partners about their experience so we can learn and improve it. This is where the volunteers come in. They will contribute to this value by collecting this feedback and will benefit themselves by learning what is important to patients and care partners. Since volunteers will be the first touch point, they will be the face of the, this experience initiative. It is important for volunteers to make a good impression as they're also contributing to the overall patient experience. They're providing these patients an opportunity to have their voice heard and an opportunity to share their experience. You may be wondering what happens to this feedback once it's collected. Our aim is to share this data once we have collected with leadership at various levels across the VCH organization. We also um, aim to use this data to inform and support opportunities to improve patient experience throughout the organization. So what does this survey actually look like? This survey includes two questions. One question basically asks uh, patients, participants to rate their overall satisfaction uh, with their experience. And now um, from ranging from very dissatisfied to very satisfied. And the other question is an open text question that basically asks them to add more um, or tell us more about their overall satisfaction with their experience. The survey is simple by design, and it is a short survey that shouldn't take more than one minute. It was designed to be this short so we can gather as much feedback as possible in the smallest amount of time without making participants feel burdened. So what are the responsibilities of a patient experience volunteer? This document must have been shared with you guys when you signed up for this, um, for this role. So I won't um, go into depth and I will just briefly explain what your roles and responsibilities are. For a further detail uh, information on your roles and responsibilities, please refer to the document shared by volunteer resources. So briefly, your role is to collect feedback from patients, care partners, and visitors entering or exiting the hospitals. This involves volunteers approaching potential participants with respect and asking them if they would like to participate in the survey. Further, each site is equipped with a toolkit um, and your job is to ensure that the toolkit is equipped with all items. If there are any technical issues with the iPad, to resolve them. And if there are issues beyond your capability to resolve them, please escalate those issues or concerns you might have to the patient experience team or the volunteer resources team. One crucial point in this document is the feedback from volunteers. As volunteers are the main point of contact for collecting this information, interacting with the participants, we expect volunteers to provide their valuable insight and ideas on improvement. This may come in the form of brief uh, end of shift surveys that will be asked for volunteers to complete at each shift uh, end, or there might be other surveys that might uh, that we might conduct during throughout the, the course of the program. What does your day-to-day -day, uh, shift look like? Um, you will come into your site and sign in at the Volunteer Resources Center. You will pick up the Patient Experience Volunteer uh, Toolkit. 
Each site has its own storage location. Your volunteer coordinator will let you know where the toolkit is on your first day. You will then proceed to the main entrance area with your toolkit and set up your designated spot. You will then recruit participants for the survey, offering them to complete the survey. Provide support to those who require it as they require it. While recruiting participants, there is a document called the tracker. We ask uh, part of volunteers to ensure to fill up the document by tracking the number of people approached along with the number of people requiring help to fill out the survey. This document is, a, is a, an important tool for us to track the number of interactions volunteers have had uh, throughout their shift. At the end of your shift, ensure that the toolkit is stocked up with all the items and paper copies of the surveys. Ensure to put the iPad on charging at the designated, designated charging station. And if the toolkit is low on any items, inform either the volunteer coordinator or the patient experience team. At the end of the shift, before you sign off, make sure to complete the end of shift survey uh, using the tracker. The end of shift survey is a short questionnaire that will ask you to enter the number of interactions you had among other, you had among other questions. This survey will allow us to identify any areas of improvement and to monitor the program. Um, there is also a checklist provided in, in the toolkit that outlines the daily tasks in detail. So moving on, I refer to the toolkit quite a bit, but what does it in entail? There are about seven to eight documents within the toolkit. This includes a checklist of tasks that are previously mentioned, cleaning procedure for the tools, a script to follow when recruiting people, reference guides, and paper surveys. In addition, the toolkit has a box of gloves, pens, hand sanitizers, cleaning wipes, and masks. The toolkit also contains the iPad, which is to be charged at the end of every shift, and the iPad charger, which should always be stationed at one point. If there is anything missing or if the toolkit is low on any of the supplies, please be sure to inform your volunteer coordinator or the patient experience team member responsible for your site. So how can the participants uh, complete the survey? Um, there are multiple options for participants to complete the survey. The basic one, the, the one that we want the participants to use most often is the iPad to collect responses. We also have paper copies of the survey in English and in the following languages, traditional and simplified Chinese, Punjabi, Persian, Arabic, and Vietnamese. For participants who may not be interested in taking the survey, offer to provide them an English co paper copy of the survey to complete on their own time if they wish. On the paper copies, there is an email address where participants can send a picture of the completed survey and a QR code, which they can access to complete the survey online if they wish. For the paper copies in the different languages, volunteers are to send a picture of the completed survey to the patient experience email address or scan the paper copy to the patient experience address. You will find a box on the top right of the paper copies prompting volunteers to submit a picture of the completed survey. For scanning the paper copy to the email address, um, not every site is equipped with a scanner. So uh, check with your volunteer coordinator if you can use the scanner to send a copy of the survey to the patient experience team. So I've mentioned previously that um, we have uh, the survey translated in six languages, but what if the participant doesn't, um, have, what if the participant's preferred language is not one of the six translated languages? In that case, we um, ask volunteers to use Google Translate on the iPad or on their phone to translate the English paper survey into their preferred language. Using how to use Google Translate reference guide provided in the toolkit, hover your phone over the survey to translate the document. Take a picture of it and show it to the participant. Give, a, give them a pen and a paper to complete the survey in their language. Once complete, send a picture of the completed survey to the patient experience team using one of the previously mentioned um, methods in the previous slides. So what other documents are in the toolkit? We have the frequently asked, volunteer, uh, frequently asked question uh, document for the volunteers and a frequently asked question um, 
document for the patients. To support our volunteers in answering common questions patients may have, please refer to the FAQ patient document. This should cover most of the questions um, patients have during uh, while, while they're filling out the survey. If you have, as a volunteer, any further questions, please refer to the FAQ volunteers document to see if your question is answered within that uh, document. Both these documents are housed in the toolkit. If a patient has questions and wants a copy of the document, please feel free to share a copy um, of the FAQ for patients with them. And of course, if you have, as a volunteer, any other questions, please reach out to your volunteer coordinator or the patient experience team supporting your site. Contact detail for the patient experience team members and the volunteer um, team are, is provided in the toolkit. This concludes part two of the three-part orientation series for us. Please close this window and complete part three to finish orientation. Thank you for your time and welcome to the program.